Hi everybody. Before we get started with this video, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, one is disclaimer here, I'm not a professional as you'll see from many of these videos. Uh, camera work and video editing is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, I've never done this before and you'll see like lighting on several of these videos is terrible. Um, can't see my face sometimes. Camera angles are all janky, like I cut my head off sometimes. Um, just had no idea what I was doing, but um, I pulled it, put it all together and it's, it's what it is. Uh, the second thing is, the song took me about a month to do. Um, and I initially thought when I first started doing this, um, that I could compress everything down to about 30 minutes. Turns out that was way off. Um, it's two hours long. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, I cut out quite a bit, um, but I tend to ramble, um, verbose, as some people like to say. Uh, so I apologize for that too. Um, but this is how the sausage gets made, so hopefully you'll watch some of it and uh, we'll enjoy it. Thanks. Hi everybody, Carter here. I'm the Brandstetter half of the Manser and Brandstetter music project we've got going. Um, doing this video today because I wanted to kind of document um, the process that I go through when we do a song. I do that for a couple of reasons. One is that Joe lives in Little Rock um, and I live in Fayetteville. So we're about three hours apart and he doesn't get to see all this stuff so I kind of want to have it for him. Um, and then for two, I get tons of questions even from other musicians like, how are you guys doing this stuff if you're so far away? You know, well, I'm like, what stuff do you use? What are you What's your whole process? And it's kind of difficult to explain, um, but I thought it would be easier to show. So, what I'm going to do is I'm about to start a new song. I've not worked on this one before. I've heard it many times over the years, but um, haven't done any work yet on this song. So, I'm going to go from step one. Well, I'll explain step one of how we started the song, and then... I will go through with each thing that I do and show you how it gets done. thought it would be fun, so here we go. All right, first thing, uh, I'm going to go through like some of the stuff that I use. Um, you have to have something to record to. In this case, I use my computer. I have a program that's called a DAW. It's a digital audio workstation. Um, as you can see here, this is my DAW, um, I've got my uh, audio interface, which I'll show you here. All right, this is my audio interface. It takes signals from the microphones and guitars and stuff, converts it to a digital signal, which then gets routed over to my audio workstation and then it records on my hard drive. Um, these are preamps. They take this, the really weak signal from the microphone, they amplify it so that it sounds thicker and fatter and um, got two of these. these um, all of this stuff is all used. Um, that's how I was able to get all this stuff pretty cheap. Um, this guy here, I use this for Acoustic instruments um, and vocals. This one down here I use for drums. And then um, also plug my guitars and bass guitar uh, into this other preamp here. This amp down here just powers the uh, monitor speakers that I have. All right. <clears throat> so, step one. Joe and I rent a place that's like up in the mountains where we like to go. Um, try to find a house or something. First time we rented a log cabin, second time I uh, 
found a house that actually had a downstairs game room with acoustic ceilings, um, and then I brought some other stuff to help kind of isolate natural room reverb, so I get like clear, uh, clear and clean signals um, from his vocals, and I'll explain all that stuff a little later. Um, but yeah, so that's where we meet, and then hook up all my stuff and start recording. The first step in the process is on whatever song we're working on first. Um, I'll record his acoustic guitar. Now, neither one of us have uh, an acoustic electric, so I have to use microphones to um, record his acoustic guitar, which doesn't isolate his the guitar away from his vocals very well. Um, the first time we recorded, we were in, again, this big log cabin uh, with this cavernous um, living room. There was reverb going all over the place. Um, nothing was very isolated at all. But this time, we were able to do it a little better. Hopefully next time we meet up, uh, at least one of us will have an electric acoustic um, that we can use. But So what I do is just record his um, acoustic guitar, which you can hear here. to uh, mute the other tracks, but um, there you could hear, you could still hear his voice a little bit through uh, that guitar track, which Joe sings really passionately and with feeling, um, but he doesn't always sing the same note every single time, and he doesn't always sing um, the same rhythm every single time. Um, he just sings what he feels, and that's awesome. I love him for that. But it does make it difficult when you try to sing back, and when you try to sing over a guitar track, and you're feeling something a little different than you sang when you first played it. And so now, like, your voice is, as you're singing is kind of sometimes conflicting with the way you sang it the first time. So, but this time we did a little bit better job of isolating the uh, acoustic guitar, and uh, he couldn't hear his voice as much, so the vocal tracks on um, this album and the last one were, I thought, like way better than the first album. Um, so then, so yeah, we record his acoustic guitar there, then we come back, puts his guitar down, um, and he just sings over the top of that acoustic guitar. And I'll I record two tracks. Um, one, they're with two different microphones. Uh, each microphone sounds a little bit different. Um, so depending on how the song goes and kind of how I want it to sound, I may use one over the other. So we'll record the whole song, him singing. That's one. Um, then when we've done that, go back and make him do it again. Because, like I said, Joe doesn't sing, always sing the same notes or the same rhythm. Um, so sometimes I can, if I think one take sounds better than the other, I can go in and um, pretty much copy and paste. Um, and then if something is a little out of time, I can like kind of nudge it a little bit and in a place where it sounds better. But yeah, so that's the process Joe and I go through when we meet, um, and then pack everything up, take it back home, and then I start doing my stuff. So um, yeah, we'll get started on that. All right, so 
the next step in the process is to record the acoustic guitar completely isolated. As you could hear um, when I played it back there, it still has, um, it's not as bad as it was the first time, but it still has quite a bit of uh, vocal bleed into the microphones uh, that are just recording the acoustic. And so that can like mess up the song. You really want each instrument completely isolated um, so you can do things like add effects and all this other kind of stuff. So what, we, what I do then is Joe will text me pictures of all the chords that he plays. I'll go in and start a new track. And then I will record, um, I'll basically learn how to play the song on the acoustic guitar, and then I'll go back and re-record it. So we have like a better audio of just the acoustic. So what I'll do, I kind of know the song now, um, after having played it through a couple of times before I started this video. What I'll do is show you... Um, where I go and what I do to do this. So hang on. All right, so I basically turned my office here into this semi recording studio. My wife loves it, by the way, that I've got this big blue, blue box in here. What I did was I got these stands off eBay for a few dollars. Um, they're cheap and really not very stable, um, but they do the job. And then I hang up moving blankets. The reason I do this is as you can see, I've got 14 foot ceilings in here hardwood floors, and drywall, which all of that, all the sound that goes out gets reverberated and comes back into the microphones, which is bad. You don't want that. I mean, you might want that if you get like a really great sounding room, um, but this one does not sound great. So I wanted to try to isolate all the audio that I record as much as possible. So I put my drums in here. Now I will record uh, all the vocal stuff and um, any acoustic instrument that I record, I will record in here also. I'll just move the snare and the drum throne and the um, hi-hat out of the way so that I can have space to move around in here and then I'll set up my microphone and start recording the acoustic guitar. <clears throat> that was a pretty shitty take, so I'm gonna do it again. All right. <clears throat> This is where the narrator comes in and says, that was in fact not a good take. Uh, my guitar is solid wood and the humidity in here fluctuates with my computer running and all my electrical equipment um, fluctuates between 40 and 55%, which is fine for an acoustic guitar, but those humidity fluctuations will cause it to detune overnight, which it did. I didn't tune it up today before I started, so now I've got to go back and do this again. Yay. All right, this time, I think that'll work. All right, so here we are back at the console. I um, have the track right here that I just recorded, the acoustic guitar, um, so I can mute 
what I recorded with Joe. Um, and this is, uh, I'll just play for you the difference between these two. So this is what I recorded with Joe. to where okay so you can hear his voice in there and this is what I just recorded no vocals now so the acoustic guitar is completely isolated which is what I wanted um, now what I will do is I will go back through and listen to the guitar as intently as I can, try to find places where I made mistakes. Also try to find places in the song um, that I got really good. And then, this is the great part about digital audio recording, is I can go in, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Um, let me move the camera. All right, I'm going to blow this up where it shows on the camera better. No, nope, not that way. This way. So you can see the waveform here. Um, I can find spots in here that I really like. Um, and then, whoa, don't want to move that. And then I can come in and I can take a pair of scissors, a little scissor tool, and I can cut it up. And I can copy that and say I want to place it here, just cover it right up. That doesn't always work on everything, but um, it does work most of the time. And it's a great way to cover up little flubs and stuff or bad timings because it's really, really difficult to play perfect time to a song. Um, for the duration, I think this one's like five and a half minutes. So um, I'm not that super great uh, with rhythm and stuff and, and timing and keeping everything like super on the dot. Um, so I have to use little tools like this to help me. Um, so I will go in and fix everything that needs to be fixed as much as I can. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. All right, so I went in and um, listened through the track several times, found some places uh, that I didn't like that I played, and um, I only had to cover up four little sections. Um, technically, I could go in and take those spots that I played really well and then just copy and paste the whole thing. But I don't like doing that because it kind of sounds robotic almost. Um, I like a little bit of mess up here and there because it makes it feel more human. I don't know. Um, less of like a jukebox and you know you're actually, it feels like you're actually playing the instrument. So I've got the acoustic guitar done. Um, now what I'm going to do is go in listen to Joe's vocals and see which take I like better, which parts, which parts of which take I like better. Um, then I will condense them all to one uh, lead vocal track here. And we will go from there. All right, so I lucked out. Uh, Joe apparently nailed his second take. Um, it, was, it was great. Um, so the whole take, I didn't have to copy and paste anything at all. Um, and so now I've got the vocal track and the acoustic guitar track. And so what I'll do now is I'm going to go in to the vocal track and I'm going to do some processing to it. 
the first thing I'll add, um, well, I'll do some processing to it to improve the sound that's already there. First thing I'm going to do is I like to add a little bit of compression. So I have a compression plugin that it's all software driven. Um, and what compression does is it uh, compresses the waveform. So it'll bring stuff that's kind of lower sounding. It'll bring it out a little more. Um, the big peaks, it'll squash those down a little bit. And you can do this to an insane degree or, you know, just a little bit. I, I like to use it just a little bit, not too much, because with compression, if you use it too much, it takes all the dynamics out of what, uh, your performance, be it an electric guitar or vocals or whatever. It just makes it sound like there's, well, I, dynamics would be... <clears throat> Um, when something gets loud or quiet, so if you take all that out, it'll all just sound the same. It's not good for me, anyway. Um, so yeah, I'll plug some uh, plug some compression in there. Next thing I like to do is um, put some equalization on Joe's voice. So what this does, oops, not that. Actually, let me do this again. What equalization does is it, you can bring out different uh, frequencies. So you can make part of the sound wave sound a bit high, uh, more, like if you want more bass, it works the same way the equalizer on your car stereo does. If you want more bass, then you bring up the bass. Um, and if you want less treble, you take the treble out. Blah, blah, blah. Except this is a dynamic EQ. Uh, again, it's software driven. Um, and with these, I can get very, very specific to what I want to hear. And with Joe's voice, um, I've kind of figured out the way I like to hear it on the record. So I have a preset, um, and then from there, I can kind of sculpt it a little bit, depending on what I want to hear from the song. I've already got kind of a good idea here, so... Um, so yeah, that's, this is before any effects or anything I put on, like reverb or delay or anything like that. So we've got compression, we've got EQ, and I will let you hear the difference. Again, this, I'm just recording this on my phone, so hopefully the microphone will pick it up. and EQ. Sick and tired of the struggle. It just brings it out a lot more. You get to hear a lot more of the um, harmonics in Joe's voice. Uh, Don't feel like myself at all. And again, without it. Sick and tired of Kind of in the background, kind of weak sounding. My back is up against the wall. All right, so now I will basically do the same for the acoustic guitar. And I've done this so much now, I kind of know what I like to hear. So I'll add, again, um, a little bit of compression here on this. Not as much as the vocal, but, and then sometimes I EQ the acoustic guitar first, sometimes I don't, um, it just depends on the song. 
for this one, I kind of wanted the acoustic guitar to sound a little bit more boxy, like really bring out the mid-range stuff a little more, maybe some, maybe a little bassier tones. Um, I have, this is a different e uh, parametric EQ, uh, or not parametric, um, a different dynamic EQ, and I have some uh, presets for that as well. So I'll turn those off, and now uh, you just let you hear the acoustic. All right, now I'll turn these on. different EQ setting. I like that particular EQ setting for this song um, because of the chord voicings that Joe uses. Um, very mid-rangey um, and it sounds a, a little more raw. Um, Whereas if there were a ton of like open chords um, and those type of phrasings, then uh, I would probably use a different one to really bring out more of the highs and make it sound more bell-like. Um, but with this song, I like the way that sounds. So right now I have the lead vocal track and the acoustic track. And Joe's part's done. Now it's my turn to add all of my stuff. All right. So now that I've got the vocal track and the acoustic guitar track, um, I have an idea of what the song is. Um, I've listened to it enough now that I kind of work out a roadmap, I guess you could say, of how I interpret the song and how I think it should be kind of, how the instrumentation should be built on it. So for this song, um, the overarching plan is that there's two main sections. There's this first part that has kind of this verse-chorus, verse-chorus bridge structure. And then there's the second part of the song, which is kind of jam, almost like outro kind of thing. Um, and what I want to do is bring out the, those two differences. I want, I want to make them sound very different. So... What I'm getting from this first half is kind of like a mellow type of, you know, it's, it's going to have a groove to it, but it's going to be pretty mellow. And then on the second section, what I'm hearing in my head anyway, is to make that part intense. Um, and start it out really quiet and then build up intensity where um, he's saying, got to get back to the heart of who I am and just like make that section super intense. So that's where my head is at with what I've got so far. The first instrument that I usually like to add um, is bass guitar. And I do that because it kind of sets the tone for me for everything else that I'll play. Um, I'll find a groove here on this first section that I like, and I'll probably what I'll do is work with the first section and get several instruments going on that, and then I will like shut my brain off and leave the second section alone for now. Um, I'll, and come back to that later. But So what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> fiddle around with my bass, 
try to find some things that I like um, as I'm playing along with the song here and we'll go from there. All right, so it's bass time. I have this really cool plugin. It's a, just a software program that I picked up for free um, called Guitar Rig 5. What's really cool about this is it lets me plug um, my electric stuff, like my bass and my electric guitars directly into the preamps. Um, I have a series of pedals that it goes through too, but that's not relevant for the bass. Um, but then it allows me to choose different amplifiers. I have an acoustic amp um, that'll come in handy if Joe and I do some acoustic shows some, one day, but I don't have a bass amp. I don't have any electric guitar amps. So I use this uh, program to take the place of that. And this particular program has tons of different amps, uh, preamps, and they all model um, other famous amps. Like if I go to the guitar amps here, I can choose uh, a number of different Vox amps. Uh, their AC30 in particular is one that I really like. Um, there's tons of different Marshall amps I can choose from. There's uh, the Mesa Boogie dual rectifier that I also use a whole lot. Um, but I would love to have those amps. Um, like here, this, uh, this is an Ampeg bass amp uh, that I like to use. I would love to actually have all this stuff, but those amps are thousands of dollars and don't have that kind of money and it's just, it'd be just wasting if I did because I don't, I don't really play out live anywhere um, with this stuff. I do it all at home. So this is just fine for my purpose and um, I really enjoy using it. So I've got uh, an Ampeg uh, bass head amp and then some other control settings. There's some compression on here. Um, should need to tune this. That's right. Let me tune this. I'll be right back. Okay, got that all tuned up. Um, so this first section, now what I'll do from here is just kind of improvise over the song um, until I find some patterns that I really like and then start to kind of formulate the bass line I want to play out of that. Um, First thing I like to do is figure out what key Joe is playing in, which is sometimes really, really difficult with Joe's songs because they, again, he uses very unique chord voicing sometimes, and many songs he will change keys, um, and yeah, they just don't obey any kind of laws um, sometimes. This particular song, uh, all of the chords are in the key of C, um, but I'm probably going to use a modal scale to play this, but uh, we'll just play along with it and see what happens.
So, listening to that so far, there are some things that are sticking out that I like. Um, one thing is, Joe goes, plays D minor, C major, then at the end of that, as I played on the guitar, he'll play this little... So I want to match that with my bass, because I, I like that part, it sounds cool. bass lines to kind of like play off the rhythms that Joe sings. So, sick and tired of the struggle. Sick and tired of the struggle. Yeah, I kind of like how that sounds. Um, so that's kind of where this comes from. I'll just sit around here. Sometimes I get something really quick um, that I really like and that I just keep on playing and like the whole the whole part will just flow out of it um, then sometimes things like nothing comes to me at all and it's horrible um, makes you feel super inadequate and like you don't know what the hell you're doing why are you even playing music you suck um, yeah, all that stuff comes up. But, this one I think is going to come relatively easy. I kind of like that part. Um, so, I'm going to, you know, mess around with this some more and see what happens. Alright, so I've been messing around with this for about an hour and a half now. I think I came up with something that I like, so... So for that second part, I've got some ideas of stuff I'm going to do. I think there will be minimal bass line there, and I'll probably just end up droning that A minor, or that A string. Um, and then to add texture and stuff, I'll come over it with some kind of synthesized bass. Um, I don't know, that's way on down the road, but... That's the bass line I came up with. Um, I like it. Uh, I think it grooves to the song well. Um, matches up in certain places with Joe's vocals and then also provides some counterpoint in some places, which is good. Um, so what I'll do now is I will record that, send the, um, then I'll compile the first part, 
into an MP3, then I'll mail it or email it to Joe and say, hey, I came up with this baseline, tell me what you think. Um, then he'll give me feedback, which is usually, for Joe, always positive, but I can always tell when he really likes something and when he's like, eh, you know, it'll either be, yeah, I like that, which is, eh, you know, you could probably do better, Carter. Or, oh my effing God, I love it, yes! And then, yeah, that's good. So, um, I'll lay this down real quick, send it to Joe, see what he says, and then we'll go from there. All right, we're back. Um, Joe loved the bass line, so we're good there. Um, now I'm going to start fiddling around with some guitars um, and see if I can come up with some stuff. The Again, on this one, if you remember going back, we I'm breaking the song up in two major sections. Um, this first section, uh, and I've told Joe about this, and he's totally on board. First section is going to be um, relatively mellow, and then the second section we will ramp up intensity uh, pretty quick. Um, so I'm thinking of trying to find a guitar part that's mellow, um, but also rhythmic, not so much melodic. Um, so I'm thinking more like arpeggios, um, that type of thing. Gotta figure out something to do. With this weird seven chord. So we could go. Yeah. Just give it a little different voicing maybe. something going what happens. I sit around and noodle and um, try to remember a lot of the music theory stuff that I learned in college, but I don't remember a ton of it. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to not waste your time, but I'm just going to sit around and play around with this some more and see what I come up with. So let's see. Um, I got away from all the arpeggios and actually went to more of a melodic line, um, more single notes, uh, and yeah, I just, it's got this kind of groove feel to it, but it's also like really laid back and feels sort of sensual, so I tried to go more with that. Let's see how it goes.
figured out for this yet, but that's what I got so far. I kind of like that. Um, I may change around some different amps. Um, I might use a different delay other than digital. I might use tape echo or um, the memory man, which is my favorite delay I have. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of ways to play around with it, but the important thing is I got a line that I think I, a lead line that I think I really like. Um, so I'm going to process this out real quick, down to MP3, send it over to Joe, see what he thinks, get some feedback, and then we'll go from there. Um, so I got the most of the first section done for that part, or for that guitar part. Um, but then when it goes into the bridge, it's a little weird. Uh, so I was playing, you know, this melodic line. But I want to break it up so that the bridge has kind of a different feel. Um, so just messing around a little bit this morning, I came back to the arpeggio idea that I had begun with and came up with... I really like that. Um, also, I switched guitars. Um, this is the Epiphone version of the um, Gibson ES335, I think it is. Um, again, this is their entry level model. I got it used. You don't have to have like really expensive new or vintage instruments to do this stuff. It's, this is perfectly fine for um, what I need. But I switched this guitar because it has the humbucker pickups um, and they provide a a bit hotter, like more meatier sound than the single coils I was using. Plus the um, semi-hollow body adds a bit more warmth. Uh, so I wanted to try this out and see how it sounded, and I'm playing around with using different combinations of the pickups, and we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I like that part that I came up with, so I'm going to um, record it real quick, and see how that goes. Be right back. Alright, so... I got the that guitar part recorded. Um. I like the way um, the other guitar sounded, or the guitar that I just used. I like the way it sounds better. It's a bit more mellow, and I want to keep things pretty mellow through this first section, but. I don't want it to sound boring. I kind of want to step it up, step up the energy or um, the intensity of it a little bit, not too much. You know, I don't. You don't want too much going on. I want to build it up a little bit until it basically starts to explode on the second section. So. Um, I want to keep things pretty raw in the beginning, so the first verse and chorus um, I'm just going to keep as is, but when the second verse and second chorus starts to come in, I want to kind of add something to it to step it up just a little bit. Um, one of the ways I like to do that is to um, play like 
upper register notes, some kind of some kind of um, upper pattern that gives, I don't know, it just gives things more energy. I don't think that's going to work here. Excuse me, I just had lunch. I don't think that's going to work here because the melodic line in the electric guitar that I'm playing is pretty busy. Um, so if I try to add other stuff on top of that with like an arpeggio or something or some other kind of um, note-filled guitar line, it's going to sound really cluttered. I don't want that. Um, so I think what I'm going to try to do is add something like atmospheric. Um, I like to do that a lot. And one of the ways that I do that is with this guitar. I love this guitar. It's probably my favorite um, because of this pickup right here. It's called a sustainer. So I can turn it on. Just play one note and it will play until the battery runs out. So I can use that um, to add a lot of, again, atmospheric type effects, um, cool textures. And one of the ways that I do that is by using this pickup and adding effects to it. And now is a pretty good time, I think, to talk about some of the effects I use. So let's go over there to the pedal board. Okay, so here's my pedal board. Um, over here at the beginning of my chain, I have a compressor. Again, I just like to use a little bit of compression, not go crazy with it. Um, I have a distortion pedal, uh, and then I have a fuzz pedal. From there it goes to my volume pedal, and then from there into my modulation stuff. So I have this whammy pedal. This thing does a lot of cool stuff. I can add things like a fifth and a fourth. Um, I can add two octaves. A lot of cool potential things to do with that. Um, and I use it quite a bit. And I have the whammy pedal. This one is a, oh, I'm about to fall over. This one is a harmonic octave generator. Um, it will, these little levers, um, these little, uh, slides here, not levers, but these little slides, um, will add a note to whatever fundamental note I'm playing. So fifth, octave, octave and a fifth, two octaves, two octaves and a third, and so on. Um, if you use them all, you can make it sound. Almost like an organ. But there's, I use this thing sometimes. It's, um, a, it's just a really neat thing um, that I like to use. Then from there, I go into my delay pedals. Uh, I have three delays. This one's digital. This one's also digital. Uh, but it also has some analog stuff. Um, and then this one is the Memory Man. That's an analog delay pedal, and it's my favorite. Um, so, yeah. What I'll do... Turn my thing on. Turn that off. So now I can play around with some of this stuff.
some really interesting effects. Um, yeah, so I'm going to spend some time with this, and um, we'll see what I come up with in a little bit. Okay, well, that um, little session did not go as planned. Um, I played around with a bunch of stuff. Nothing really worked. Um, but through all the noodling and playing around with the effects and stuff, I actually did find something that I liked. So on the bridge section... Uh, which is the last little part before the big second section starts. Um, I found something that kind of steps up the energy like we were talking about. And um, it's a really cool effect um, that I've used a couple of times, but well, actually only once on a previous record did I do this, but... Um, this, so what I do is I've got my harmonic octa octave generator on, but I've got nothing except, um, the filter on the filter. Uh, it's an envelope filter. So the attack of the string with guitars, when you like hit the string, it's an immediate sound. That's the attack on like a like a cello, for instance. When you draw the bow, it's a very gradual. It has a slow attack. So I use the envelope filter on this to take the attack way down, so that it sounds so that when I sh pluck the string, it sounds like more swell, like there's more of a swell and more um, like a bowed instrument like. Uh, then I used the, I found um, a dual delay that I like on the uh, timeline and then also came over the top of that with a delay on the memory man and then use a quarter and you take the little rough sides of the quarter and if you jiggle it on the string in such a way you end up getting this so with all the delays um, and the envelope filter and the way this the rough edges of the quarter work you get this really um, spacey kind of sound that I think really goes well with the um, bridge so you'll hear that on the song and um, I think it's uh, just a cool thing to like explain how I got that sound. Um, but I still haven't come up with anything for the second verse course yet. Um, and then I may still do add something else um, to the bridge there. So more work to be done. Gonna get back to it and keep playing around. All right, um, so after noodling around some more, um, I found something I really liked. And ironically, it's the thing, it's a thing that, um, a tool that I used that I previously said wouldn't work on here because it would make everything too busy. But what I'm going to do when I mix it all down is like end up making it pretty quiet. Um, try to make it almost like it's subliminal, like it it's, doesn't really stand out much. But um, here we go. I'm going to just play it real quick.
So there's that. Um, going to practice it some more and then lay it down, then send what I've done today to Joe to see what he thinks. So that's it for now. All right. So last night, um, couldn't do a whole lot because everybody was in bed, but um, I kept listening to the song over and over and I just felt like I wanted something to kind of sweep into the bridge section um, where I do the little um, quarter thing. And I was playing around with effects and stuff and I came up with something that's really cool using um, the DL4 here. And this has a cool little feature on it called a loop sampler. So it'll sample anything you play up to 14 seconds, I think in length is the, yeah, 14 seconds. And it'll just play it over and over like this. So it'll play it as long as it'll play it indefinitely. But it also has this cool feature where it will play what you record backwards. And speed it up. So if I turn the reverse on, you can really come up with some very cool uh, types of stuff um, with that. And so I did, and um, I'll show you in a sec what I came up with. Okay, so... I'm going to solo this so it's the only thing you can hear. Um, when the song goes into, into this um, kind of bridge section, when I play the little quarter thing, it kind of comes in rather abrupt. I wanted something that kind of gradually leads into that. So I got down with the DL4 last night and came up with this. Okay. Here, I'm just going to solo this so you can hear just the part I came up with. drums with this the the little sweep thing will come in crash with the crash symbol and then we go in with the um, little quarter part that I play crash symbol so that's kind of what kind of where I'm at with that um, so, I think for the moment, the main parts of the first section, um, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I sent all this to Joe last night. He really loves it. Loves the way the, 
direction the song is going. So I think now it's time to start working on the second section that gets super intense. And I have a lot of ideas for how to do that. Um, and when I get started, I'll talk about those. And we're back. So, coming up on the second section here. Joe does this really cool figure uh, with A minor, and then he'll um, he goes up to a different A minor voicing and like bends the strings, comes back down, is like dun, 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 and then just plays that uh, throughout the second section. It's just it's just a really cool figure and. I want to accentuate it, because Joe doesn't play a lot of stuff like this very often. Um, so what I'm thinking is, well, when I, I've already done the bass line for this, um, and what I did was just, just played the A string. Dun, 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 dun. So that um, A string is that's all I'm going to play on the bass guitar for that section. But like I talked about earlier, I want to like just make this thing explode by the time we get to the end. So I'm going to start this section out here with having just the bass and then just um, Joe's acoustic. Nope. So play that, uh, four bars of that, and that'll kind of like, that's a statement, so to speak, for um, that's kind of the, well, it is a statement, but it kind of sets the, like, foundation for this is what this section is going to be. This, everything in this section is going to be based around this. So I'm going to play, um, there will be drums, too. I'm, I'm going to record, like, real drums, and probably on this second section add in some um, electronic percussion sounds and stuff, but it's just going to be the acoustic, the bass, and then some sort of drums, probably just a bass drum, I don't know yet. But then after four bars of that, then I want to come in with something else to, again, step up the energy level, and I want to come over the top of the bass with something. Um, and what I'll do um, is I'm going to use a synth. This is a um, software synthesizer. It's a Surge. It's free. They have tons and tons and tons of different um, presets you can use, but also gives you tons of control over um, the sound with all these different um, sliders and like any normal synth would have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish around with some presets um, try to find a synthesized bass sound that I like and um, that kind of fits what I'm hearing in my head and um, then 
probably end up tweaking it somehow if it doesn't sound exactly the way that I want. And um, we'll go from there. Okay, went fishing through and I found um, a patch that kind of fits the vibe that I'm going for. So um, let's just play it here. Just the bass guitar and eventually the drums. to be very intense, um, almost uncomfortable, um, and I think this particular bass sound, um, it is droning, but it also has um, some, a distorted feature to it. Um, and it's a, it has a low frequency oscillator on it, so it's, um, so I like it. Um, I'm going to record it real quick, and then I can start working on some of the guitar stuff that I, I want to do. Alrighty, we're back. So, um, messed around with this for a little bit and I made a couple changes. One, I went back and re-recorded bass on this. Uh, now I'm working on the second section. Um, and I liked what I played on the synth part so much that I went back and doubled over it with the bass, uh, the bass guitar. And so it's really heavy and driving now. And then I also wanted to add like a really heavy, like distorted guitar also. Um, and that actually, I'm actually playing the same notes there with that. So when you come into this, um, part of the reason that I'm doing it this way is because of Joe's lyrics. So. At the end of the bridge there, he sings, um, now I think I finally lost my mind. And so, like I wanted to create this picture of, um, I feel like I'm going insane. So, um, turn this up. I'll play uh, like, four bars before the end of the bridge section, and then you should be able to hear what I've come up with. So then this is like the statement of what's going to be played throughout the whole thing, uh, or throughout this whole second section, that I really wanted that guitar, his acoustic guitar, to like state, you know, um, things are changing here and it's about to get dark, so... what I've come up with there, and I've got a few more ideas that I want to play around with, 
One is more of like a um, a lead guitar part playing more higher notes um, than the dun, 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 than the rhythm section. Um, sort of like some kind of lead over the top of that. And then uh, another idea I'm going to fool around with, I don't know if I can make it work, but I think it would be really cool if I can, is as this was playing, or when it stops there at the bridge, um, back when we were, Joe and I, when I was recording Joe's vocals, um, you can hear him breathing in the background. I'll, I mean, I will cut that out. Um, all of the noise in between him singing, like I'll edit all that, all that out. But it made me, it almost sounded like someone was whispering in the background, um, which kind of leads to this eerie feeling, you know, like you've lost your mind and there's all these voices going on in the background and I think what I'm going to try to do is mimic some whispering and maybe some like far off laughter um, and start introducing that while he's making that um, acoustic guitar statement in the beginning and then continue to sprinkle it through um, as this second section goes on. I think if I can get it right, it'll be really cool and really eerie. And um, I think it'll just add the, just to this craziness, this huge intensity that's coming up with this section. So uh, I'm going to fiddle around for a little while on... Um, coming up with a lead guitar part, and then um, probably tomorrow or something, see if I can pull off the whispering and laughter. It's kind of messed up, but I, if I can get it right, I think it'd be really cool. So, see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've done some things since yesterday. Well, did some things yesterday and um, have explored some things today. The first thing I did was come up with kind of like a lead guitar line uh, during that second section and It's just a triplet pattern, just strumming one or yeah, strumming one note um, with like pretty heavy distortion and then um, some delay on there, some analog delay, and that kind of did what I wanted it to do, but not enough. Like, and I was texting Joe about this. Really want this section to feel insane. Um, he just sings, I think I finally lost my mind, and then comes in during the second, second section with got to get back to the heart of who I am. And so, just, I don't know. I just, the way I interpret it, the way, the things that I hear in my head just want this section to just sound very uncomfortable and very insane. So, while that guitar part did its job, to me it's not enough. Um, so, I wanted to make it even more crazy, so what I did was um, 
I copied that, that guitar line. I put it on its own track, and then um, used a, a bit of software um, called Fracture, and it will take things, it has several oscillators in it, and it'll take things and break them up and spit them out kind of randomly, and um, it fractures things. Um, has tons of different presets in it that do all different kinds of stuff, but I specifically wanted to use this one because of the potential that it had to make something sound crazy. And so I found something that I like, and it sounds like this. That's a bit insane, but given the context of what I'm trying to achieve here, if you throw it on top of the um, lead guitar line that I have, and then in conjunction with the um, kind of like the main guitar riff through the second section here, plus the bass line, like. like a it's like a randomness and kind of just just a shocking kind of that's that's weird and just makes you feel a bit uncomfortable and that's pretty much what I'm after um, with this second section that's yeah so um, that's what I've come up with so far and I like it but, again, it's not enough, especially at the end. Um, I still want to do, like, the whispers and laughter that I talked about. I'm still trying to figure out in my head how I'm going to make that work. Um, hell, I might even have my kids come in here and just scream. Um, and then run their voices through some effects and stuff and see how that sounds. Um, or have them laugh, or, I don't know, get my wife in here, maybe she'll do something? I, I don't know. It's just every time I come up with something for this, I like it, but I always end up feeling like it's not enough. It's not enough. Um, which is odd because most times when I come up with stuff and I don't like it, I don't have that feeling that it's not enough. I feel like, okay, well, that was an idea that didn't work, so I'll just scrap it and, you know, try to work on creating something else. But it's, this is the first time that this has happened, so um, it makes me a little nervous that I'm actually recording this, and yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to go, man, but uh, from what I've told Joe, he's down for it, um, you know, wants me to be as creative as I can be, and um, he's liked all the stuff I've done so far. He hasn't heard the the glitchy guitar part yet, but um, I want to save that. Um, 
I don't really know how this is going to go, but I'm feeling more, more, more. So I'm going to go with it. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I really want to work on the, the drum, the drum track or percussion track that you've heard playing throughout this is just, it's a sample that I looped over and over and over again. It's not what's going to be played. Um, throughout the first section, I'm going to play acoustic drums. I know that already. On the second section, I'm going to be doing um, mostly electronic percussion. It's going to be very sparse and nothing's going to be very busy. Um, but for like the bass drum sound, I want it to be very deconstructed, um, not like a real like thud or anything like that, but more of a um, and then the snare will be more of a so I want that kind of sound which should make this even more uncomfortable. Um, so I've got literally thousands of samples of stuff to run through. So I'm going to do that. Um, it's going to take me a while, but I, I should be able to find the right sound. If I can't, I'll take something that's close, um, use the software and tweak it to how I like, and um, we'll go from there. Alrighty, we're back. I messed around with some uh, percussion stuff and found some sounds that I really like and um, put those in there and sent it to Joe and he loves it. It's really shaping up into, I feel like it's shaping up into kind of the vision that I had. Um, so far, so good. Um, so the sounds I found, uh, the bass drums, I ended up using two different bass drums. One was more of that bulky, deconstructed <laughs> sound. Um, and then the other one is like a more tight, like <laughs> sound. So um, here's just the bass drums. kind of snare sounds that hit on the two and four are um, kind of have that <laughs> sound to it. Oh, crap. Dizziness. For the part where Joe bends the uh, bends the guitar strings, I didn't want to slap. Um, I think that's on the four of that measure. So, but I didn't want to slap like a heavy in there on that because, again, like I said previously, that's um, something really cool that Joe does on his guitar, and um, I want to accentuate it. So I found a cool snare type sound, um, lowered the volume a bit so it doesn't like overpower Joe's guitar, but it also has this weird um, industrial type sound going on, almost like a machine. It's like, so he's like, so it like plays off of that uh, guitar part. Um, and then with, I'll throw Joe's guitar on this.
provides like a percussion hit on the four there, but doesn't get in the way and kind of like plays off of it. So I like that. So all together, it sounds like this. sounds like the whole thing almost sounds like um, something from Massive Attack um, or like Tricky. Um, I love both of those bands, so well, Tricky's just a guy, but um, I love their music um, and maybe that's where this comes from. I don't know, I have tons of influences, but um, yeah. I really like it so far. So, what I'm going to work on now is um, I'm going to try to do the voices, laughter, um, that kind of thing, and see if I can nail this. It's interesting, I texted Joe yesterday, like, thinking of content for the whispers. Like, what am I actually going to say? Um, and I texted him thinking of the context of the song, and I asked him, could you send me, um, like, four to seven phrases of, like, negative self-talk that goes in your head, you know, that when you're, that leads to this kind of song being written. Um, and my thought was that, you know, he sent those to me. I could read those as whispers um, amidst laughter and stuff. Um, but he had this really cool answer that I want to say here. And um, it's just, it's an amazing thing about Joe. He said, nope. Um... I write this kind of music so that those kind of thoughts don't stay in my head. I thought that was like just the coolest thing. Um, Cause he, I mean, he said many times it's writing these songs is cathartic for him. It's um, a coping mechanism. It's, it's like how he deals with things. Um, puts it down on paper into music and like uses it as a thing to suck this stuff out of his head and there it is. And now it's gone. And it could be great if more people had stuff like that that they could use to as an outlet, you know. Um, anyway, that's just a really cool thing. So I replied that um, I have enough negative self-talk probably for the both of us. So I'm going to try to use some negative thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm just going to explore some things and see what I come up with. Um, it's storming today, so I can't mow. So um, I've got some time, and uh, see how it goes. Okay, we're back. I did some things. Um, first thing I did was add like some maniacal laughter. Uh, put that on a track, and. I did it just coming straight out of the first section, um, right after Joe says, I've lost my mind, and feels like, you know, like your own head, like inside your own head, you're laughing at yourself because you're losing your, I don't know, that's what I felt like I should do, so I didn't. 
Um, and that sounds like this. I also used two different effects on this one. Um, I used a delay slash reverb plugin um, that can make some really crazy sounds. Um, and then once the delay kicks in on the laughter, I think um, like maybe half a bar or a bar and a half, then I put a tremolo on it so that it that 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 uh, so that it sounds I don't know I just like the way it sounded so um, here is that. So you hear the kind of sound, um, and then on the back of that, you hear the tremolo come in. That's da -da -da. <laughs> um, and then after I did that, um, I came up with the whisper stuff. Um, and I did this kind of like a back and forth between um, like self-talk, you're talking to yourself and then you're replying to yourself, which is in and of itself kind of crazy, but it sounded like it would work here. Um, and then um, ran it through an EQ that makes it sound like you're on a telephone call. Um, I didn't add any effects to this. I may throw some reverb on it. I'm not sure yet. Um, I'll do that. I'll look at that later after um, I go in and start doing a final sweep on stuff to add effects or take them off or make EQ changes wherever I feel is necessary. But Um, that's just what came to me, um, so I'm going to go with it, despite every time I come up with something like that, um, I always feel incredibly inaccurate, or not inaccurate, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, can't think of the word. It's close to that though, um, but yeah, I, I always think stuff I do sounds corny or stupid. Um, I'm terrible at writing songs and lyrics, so I don't, and um, I've sent it to Joe though and he really likes it, so we're just going to go with it. Uh, and then at the very end of this section, um, I threw in like a crazy maniacal scream, um, EQ'd it to sound like a telephone, and then threw some, um, a heavy complex echo reverb on there, and sounds, with the full song, it sounds like this. It just, um, I thought, I mean, as I've talked about before, I wanted to just continually raise the energy level of this section, make it feel uncomfortable and insane, and feels like just finally reaching that point where you can't take it anymore and then just scream. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Um, send it to Joe, he loves it. Uh, so we're gonna go with that. Uh, now I'm gonna shift 
back to the first section and record acoustic, acoustic drums there. Uh, and I'll go over that process and how I do that. And we'll start there. All right, so I'm back in the uh, drum room. I got everything uh, set back up. And what I'll do now is um, just play the song over and over um, and then play along with it and um, find stuff that I like and that I want to do more of. Um, I'll try out different things, um, different drums to use, different cymbals to use, all that kind of stuff like any normal drummer would, and uh, see what I come up with. Alrighty, so I came up with uh, some drum stuff that I like. Um, after practicing for a while, I uh, laid it down. Um, now I'm going to go through and process everything. So I'll um, add compression, EQ, effects, and everything to uh, all the different drum things. So the snare, I've got the top and bottom. Um, both mics, my overhead mics, um, bass drum, rock tom, floor tom, and hi-hat mic. Um, I'll go through individually and uh, EQ each thing, and I will bring levels of every single track that I have down then, um, then go in and start to create kind of what's the beginning of the final mix. Um, make sure that everything can be heard clearly. Um, and then, yeah, and go from there. So I'm going to work on this for a while and I'll be back. Okay, back. Um, I have gone through the drum stuff and um, EQ'd everything, put a, a little reverb on snares and the overheads. Um, I fixed a couple places where the bass drum wasn't like super in time. Um, and then went ahead and mixed everything um, to where it's round about where it should be. Um, everything can be heard well. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is go in. I've not put any effects at all on Joe's voice um, other than some compression and EQ. Um, his vocals are like totally dry through the whole thing. So what I'm going to do now is go through his vocals and put some reverb or maybe some other effects in there. I don't know. I do know, though, that as I've listened to this song, I really like how dry his vocals are um, in certain places. So, like, especially the beginning. Like, this part here, right before the chorus, like the verse, um, I love that it's dry there. Um, it just gives, like, this minimalist kind of vibe to this whole song, which is what I'm after. Um, but when it goes to... The chorus there, I want to add some selective reverb there to give his voice, because it, the chorus kind of opens up there. So it's like, who's myself? Like, 
I love how his vocal rhythm changes and his notes are drawn out longer and it just feels like it opens up a little bit. So I want to match that um, with some reverb on his voice. And due to how awesome digital recording is, um, I can use um, a reverb plugin called Revelation that comes with Cubase. And um, I have all these different reverbs that I can put on his voice. Um, some are small, some are big. Um, and then I can add however much of that I want, and then however much of his dry voice that I want on top of that. Um, I don't want anything too huge on this. Um, so I'm going to go with... I like complex echoes a lot. Let's see, and I'll tell you in a second what I'm going to do here. My back is up against the wall. this off once I find the thing that I like. I'm going to turn it off and then have it have the reverb turn on at a very specific spot in, when he when he uh, sings here. I don't I think I want it to come in when he starts singing lose instead of how could I lose? So like when he says lose then activate the uh, reverb. So let's try that and see what it sounds like. My back is up against the wall. sounds, it has its own sound, um, but it can muddy the original signal up. Delay, you can create reverb effect, type effects with delay, but it preserves better the original signal that um, you're sending to it. So, I'm going to use a free delay plugin called Valhalla. Allah, 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 Allah. And, uh, where'd his vocal go? Okay. Okay. It is going to take me, actually, I'm going to use another plugin from, it's Valhalla Supermassive. Uh, they've got some cool, we got some cool delays in here. That's pretty cool. Obviously, that's too much. Um, so I'm going to go in and pick a delay. Um, I'm not going to sit here and bore you with it. But I'm going to go in and pick a delay and then um, see how it sounds. So I'll be right back. All right, I think I found something that works. Kind of does what I wanted it to. So I've turned off and on 
Um, I found a reverb that I like. Um, it is a an echo that I'm running um, 30 second notes on. I've got the mix turned down where the effects aren't too wet on his voice and it sounds like this. My back is up against the wall. Just some texture and some space to his voice in those little certain sections and helps break up um, I don't want to say monotony but helps give some more defined structure I guess to the chorus over the verse you know I mean it, I wanted the whole thing to be mellow and it is but you don't want it so mellow that, I don't know, like a run-on sentence. Like everything is just one mash of um, mellowness. Uh, you want to like break it up a little bit. Give, give people's ears something to, oh, that's different there. Oh, that's different there. Um, not so much where it's confusing, but you want to catch... The, atten the attention of people's ears sometimes, and um, I think this is a cool way to do this here. I think, I think, um, people listening might not like it. I, I don't know. Um, but I like it, so I'm going to use it. Um, and then I'm basically going to do the same thing on the second course, coming up down here. And then I'm going to use something different, maybe a reverb, on the bridge part with the um, guitar with the quarter thing that I play that's really spacey. Um, or I may not do anything at all because uh, there's so much volume of sound, not not loudness, but like just the sheer immensity of sound that is happening there with that guitar, the two other guitars going on. It might be best to keep his vocals dry there. I don't know yet. I'll have to play around with it and see um, what sounds good, but that's where my head is at anyway. So I'm going to mess around with this stuff and I'll be back. Um, so I saved the ins and outs for the delay on his voice or uh, vocals on the uh, second course, and then on the bridge I found a, um, a chamber reverb that it sounds beautiful. So let's try that. And the boys can't see. vocals on this second outro section I do want to keep dry um, but I want to use a different kind of effect on there just to just tweak it just a little bit to make it um, sound weirder or more intense uh, I've got lots of effects in here I'm thinking like maybe a flanger or even distortion. 
I might try some distortion. Um, we'll see. I'm gonna play around with it and be right back. All right, that was fast. Um, I ran through several different um, modulation effects. Um, so I went through a flanger, metalizer, phaser, ring modulator. None of them really made sense. Um, but then I was like, why not just use a chorus? So, a chorus effect. Um, so I did, and this happened. Get back to the heart of who I am. It's just, when you hear with, with the music, it's so good. I think that goes perfect. Um, I I think I'm pretty much done with the main part of the, like the song. Um, at this point, I usually work on the intro. Um, some people do that first, I guess, um, but I, I just don't. I'm not really good with coming up with intros for songs. Um, the, to go out of the song, to end the song, um, what I'm going to do... <laughs> just going to fade it out like that. Um, but for the intro, I did come up with a little, a small drum part. And then it comes in. That seems a little boring. Um, I mean, I want it to be mellow, but it seems like it needs a little something else. Okay, for the intro, again, wanting to keep it simple, but something that sounds cool. Uh, one thing that sounds cool throughout this whole thing is the acoustic guitar part uh, Joe wrote for it. So I'm gonna start the song out with uh, four bars of that. And on the second group, I'm gonna come in with the bass guitar um, a fourth of the way through the last two bars because it has this uh, boo -doo, boo -ba -doo, boo I think. Um, so that's gonna come in, then the little drum part comes in that I already did, and then I uh, took a sliver of um, the main electric guitar part and threw it in there and it all kind of comes together at the beginning of the song pretty well I think. introduces you to different elements um, of the first section of the song and kind of gives a statement about how, what the song is going to be and um, yeah up until the second section where things get weird. So um, I 
I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to listen through several more times uh, and make sure there's nothing um, strange happening. I need to make sure that the uh, master stereo out isn't too loud. If it starts peaking up here um, over plus 6 dB, then you start, and uh, when you master the track down to its final thing, you just, it, the digital stuff starts clipping. Um, very unwanted sound. Um, so I'm going to do that. Then, um, once I get that part done, what I will do is come over here to um, E-Mastered. It is um, a bunch of uh, engineers helped develop um, AI for mu home musicians like me. You can go in. It's a small fee. I think it's like eight bucks a month or something. Um, I use this just as much as I use my digital audio workstation. Um, I use this to master my tracks. Uh, mastering is, it's an art form. Um, I have no idea how to do it. You, there's apparently some stereo widening that goes on. Um, there's compression that goes on as well. This is oh, like all of the tracks combined together into one song. And then you come over and master that. So there's stereo widening, there's compression, there's uh, volume limiting. And it is an art form all its own. Um, I try to know my own limitations and... I have no idea how to even begin to start doing it. Um, that kind of thing I think would take years of learning. Um, I'm only 43, so I guess at some point I can start doing it. But for the cheap price that this thing offers, um, why not use it? That's um, that's the process. That's what we go through when we make a song, and um, it's been really fun to do this video. Really, it kind of challenging and made me nervous through the process. Um, I figured the worst that could happen is I wouldn't like anything, and then uh, I could just not release the video. But I like the way things went, I think, and um, I'm probably not going to do this again, but I'm glad that I took this opportunity to do it and share with everybody like what we do, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching.